Back before brioche and pretzel buns took over the universe, we used to serve hamburgers on something known as the potato bun. It was simple, tasty, and perfectly complemented while not overpowering the taste of your hamburger. Well, I wanna show you a few secrets to get big, beautiful, golden brown buns every single time that you can be proud to serve up. First though, we need to knock out some prep. Sound good? Let's bake. I'm going to start off this recipe by preparing a potato. I've got an eight to 10 ounce russet potato that I've rinsed well under water. Then I'm going to poke holes on all sides using a fork so that it doesn't explode in the oven. Transfer it to a pan or a sheet tray lined with parchment paper in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 to 70 minutes. All right, Comey's for my first secret. We're gonna be using a method known as Tenzong. This is an Asian technique where we take some of the flour, some of the liquid in our recipe, and we cook it together over low heat until it becomes a really thick slurry. Then we take that, we add it to the dough during the dough making process. Now this is gonna do a few things for us. First, it's going to ensure that our dough is not overly sticky when we handle it. Second, it can actually help our buns rise even higher. Third, most important, moisture. It's going to make these buns crazy moist, crazy delicious by increasing the overall hydration rate in our dough recipe. Then last but not least, you're gonna love it. It can extend the shelf life so they last longer. Awesome. One of the best things about this is it's crazy easy to make. Here's how you do it. The total amount of bread flour for this recipe is four cups. I'm gonna be taking two tablespoons from that four cups and adding it right to a medium sized pot. Next, I'm going to add in a quarter cup of water. I'm gonna use a whisk and mix it together until it is completely combined and smooth, and it should resemble a slurry. At this stage, I'm going to add in a quarter cup of whole milk. You could also use 1% or 2%. Using that same whisk, mix it together until it's completely combined. Then, going over to the cooktop over low heat, I'm going to continually whisk it for about seven to 10 minutes until it's smooth and becomes like a thick paste. Now, the best analogy I can give you is that it will become like an overly thick hollandaise sauce or even like a very thick cream of wheat. This is perfect. We're next gonna remove it from the cooktop and set it to the side and cool it to room temperature, which takes about 30 minutes. Then once our potato is done baking, we're gonna remove it from the oven and let it sit for five to seven minutes or until we can touch it by hand. In the meantime, let's make our dough. In the bowl of a stand mixer, I'm adding a half cup of warm milk in between 112 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit, then a quarter cup of water in between 112 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. The total sugar for this recipe is one third cup, but I'm going to be taking two tablespoons from that sugar and adding it right to the bowl of that stand mixer. Next, I have one packet of active yeast. This totals seven grams for all those who always ask. I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. Now, grab a whisk and mix it together for maybe 10 seconds until all these ingredients are combined. What I'm gonna do is let it sit for five to seven minutes or until a raft forms on top. Now, if you're using instant yeast, you do not need to wait for that raft to form. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare the dry ingredients. So the remaining four cups of flour minus two tablespoons, I'm going to add in the remaining third cup of sugar minus two tablespoons. Then I'm adding in one and a half teaspoons of coarse salt. Use a whisk and mix it together until it is combined. Then just briefly set it to the side. Now I'm gonna go over and check out my potato. Yep, it's okay to touch for me. I know I definitely have some calloused up hands being in the food world for so long. If it's still hot to you, just wait until it cools down, but you definitely do not want a cold potato. I'm just gonna peel it using a tournée knife. You could also use a paring knife until the peelings are gone. Then I'm gonna add it to a food mill and just turn on the handle until the potato is completely mashed and through there. Also, don't forget to use a rubber spatula and scrape off all that goodness. You're going to need all of it. You'll end up with about a scant one cup of mashed potatoes. Also, the other option would be to use a ricer. Both will work for this application. Let's head back over to our milk, water, yeast, and sugar mixture. The raft has formed on top. We are good to go. Transfer this now to a stand mixer. I'm going to fix the hook attachment. Then I'm turning the speed on to low. Let's immediately add in our mashed potatoes. Then I'm gonna add in our dry ingredients. That's the flour, sugar, and salt mixture very slowly until it is completely in there. You can see the ingredients are starting to come together. Then immediately add in one large egg. 
followed up with our Tanzong. Be sure to use a rubber scraper to get all of it out of there. We need that hydration in there to ensure that our dough is incredibly fluffy and light. Now, once the dough starts to pull away a little bit from the bowl, I'm going to add in a total of one third cup of softened unsalted butter in three different stages. Do not add the next chunk of butter until the first one is mixed in. You'll notice that it's a little bit soft at first, but it will absolutely reapply to that hook attachment. You'll know the dough is done when the bowl is mostly clean and fixed to that hook attachment. Remove the bowl from the stand mixer and transfer it over to an airtight container. Now, I love these Cambro plastic containers because you can see the measurements on there, and it's great because I want it to double or even triple in size, and it gives me a really good read. Once you've added the lid on there, we want to put it in a warm place for one hour. Now, you know my trick. I like to put it in the oven slightly cracked with the oven light on. That is it. It creates a great proofing environment around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, it's just the oven light that's on. Then after that amount of time, I'm pulling out our dough. You can see it's at least double in size, more like two and a half times the size. Love that oven trick. Then what I'm going to do is transfer the dough over to my butcher block. I'm going to lightly sprinkle some of the bread flour on there, maybe just a teaspoon or so. Then take the dough out of the container and put it right on there. If you want to, to me it's no big deal. You could lightly spray the inside of your container with no stick spray if you wanted to remove it easily. For me, I don't much care about that. Then press down the dough to release all of the air. Then I'm just going to cut the dough into 10 equal sized pieces using a bench knife. You can absolutely just eyeball it here. If you wanna get a good idea of size, it's about a heaping half cup per piece, or if you wanna be real precise, each one weighs 125 grams. Now what we need to do is form it into a small bowl. Now, take one of the pieces of the dough and place in your left hand making a loose cup-like gesture, then using your other hand, push through the center from the bottom up to the top while closing your cup-like gesture a little tighter each time. The goal here is to form a very taut, firm ball just like this. Excellent. Now, for the other way to do this, much easier. Take the piece of dough, flip it over, Fold the bottom to the center, the top to the center, the right to the center, the left to the center, and then roll it over one time. Then enclosing your hand over the top, roll it in a round circle. This will also make the ball very taut and firm. This is great. You can use either of these. Then we're just gonna place these on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper, five to each tray, and I'm gonna cover it with a light kitchen towel and let it sit for one hour or until it's doubled in size. With about 25 minutes or so left in that rising process, I'm going to fill an eight by eight pan, three quarters of the way full with cold water, adding it to the oven on the very bottom rack. I'm going to preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit on convection. If you don't have convection, 400 degrees Fahrenheit will suffice. Also, while I'm waiting for everything to preheat up and rise, I'm gonna make a quick egg wash. So using one large egg yolk and two tablespoons of milk, you can use whole 1%, 2%, doesn't matter. Whisk it together until it's completely combined. Just a little bit more time until everything is done rising. Let's have our first look. Fantastic, doubled in size. I know they're good. And I push the top of the bun and it springs right back up and feels slightly firm. This is excellent. Now take the time to generously brush our egg wash on each of our hamburger buns. You wanna make sure they're coated. This is going to ensure they'll be beautifully golden brown. Then in the oven on the middle rack at 375 degrees Fahrenheit convection for 17 to 20 minutes. So while this first batch is in the oven, I got to thinking, what are some different toppings we can put on the potato buns? Why not make it an onion bun or sesame seed or poppy seed? Yeah, we can do all of those. For onions, here's what I do. In a medium saute pan, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of unsalted butter and a half peeled and small diced yellow onion. Season it with a little bit of coarse salt. Then we're gonna cook it for five to seven minutes on low to medium heat. We're not looking for a full caramelization, just a little bit brown and some nice flavors. Set it to the side on a plate, spread it out so that it cools down. Now, let's go have a look at our buns and see where we're at. Oh my goodness, absolutely beautiful. They will read 208 degrees Fahrenheit internally when they are finished. Now, one of the most beautiful things about the Tenzong is you can get an extra four days 
of shelf life out of these hamburger buns and they freeze amazingly well. So don't be afraid to pop them in the freezer and pull them out when you're ready to use them. Now for those other buns that I'm gonna add a few toppings to, make sure they are all brushed with the egg wash. For the first one, going to add on a half teaspoon of sesame seeds. It does not need to be perfect, just coat the top as best you can. Then how about some poppy seeds? A quarter teaspoon will suffice to cover the top. Again, does not need to be perfect. Then for the onions, take about a tablespoon or so and generously spread them out over the top. Same thing, 375 degrees Fahrenheit in the convection for 17 to 20 minutes. And oh, these look so, so good. And really not much to say when plating this up. Maybe just brush on some butter, but let's have a look in the inside. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Incredibly tender, so moist, and the flavor's just on point. This is absolutely the bun recipe you should be using for all of your hamburger or cheeseburger recipes. Does it take some time? Sure. Is it worth it? 100%. Now, if you're looking for something to serve these up with, check out my Smash Burgers. They will be so good paired up with them. I've got a great recipe video. See you on there.